My name is Andrew Henderson, and I have a confession to make. For some time, I've been focused on living my life in a way that's just good enough and spending my time in places that are just good enough. If I look back at when I first started embracing this nomad capitalist lifestyle, ever before there was such a thing, it was traveling. And as I traveled more and more and more, the usual cracks of travel started to expose themselves. The frustrations of airlines and the trouble of airport security and challenges of checking into the latest hotel and never feeling quite at home. I did that for years. I traveled all around the world. I dragged a suitcase behind me and there were times when I would spend six months in Asia and I would go from country to country to country because I wanted to build a network. I wanted to know how things worked in every country in the world. And while I've decided that a lot of those countries are great places for me, there were also places along the way that just didn't serve me where the energy was bad, where I sometimes felt downright just badly. But I kept doing it because I wanted to build this business. I wanted to make an impact on helping people to become global citizens. And so I tolerated that. As Nomad Capitalist grew and as our team grew and as I had a sense of what it is that worked and I relied on the network, I continued to settle for just good enough at times. I remember early on, when I was investing in real estate, I went to Montenegro and I found a property that was a great deal. It was a great price per square meter. It was right near the water and it was a very low price. And because I was new to the market, because I hadn't really done a lot of real estate investing up until then, I said, well, I don't wanna buy what I really want. So let me buy this because it feels comfortable. And then I would go there and after a couple days, I would say, well, this isn't what I want. And eventually I had to go and sell that and buy what I really wanted. To me, the beauty of Nomad Capitalist is you shouldn't have to choose. You get to keep more of your own money. You get control of your own finances. You have more opportunities and more options than 99.9% .9 of people in human history. And yet it's so easy to fall into the trap of, oh, this is good enough. When I came to Mexico City this year, I had been here many times before, both to Mexico City and to places all over Mexico. And I look back and I say, I've always loved it here. I love this colorful money. Yeah. It, every year it's worth less, but I love it. You know, what I, you know what I like to do? Is I like to get like these small value banknotes and just get like stacks of them. You know, like, like Shark Tank or the Dragon's Den, they'd have like the stacks of money. Just get, like the stacks of money. It's like, eh, it's worth $17. Years ago, when I came here on a business trip with some folks who were helping us plan one of our conferences at the time. And we were staying in the heart of Mexico City's Beverly Hills, the Polanco neighborhood. And I said, wow, what a great place. I said, what would it cost to buy an apartment here? And one of the guys said, a million dollars minimum. And I allowed that million dollars. At the time, that was a lot of money for me. And it's a million dollars is still a lot of money. But I said, wow, you know, I wouldn't want to, it's uncomfortable to spend one million dollars for me on one home because I'm not gonna take out a mortgage. I mean, that's a lot of cash to spend. And so you know what I did? I settled. I went out and I bought more properties that I said, oh, this is an investment, and many of them were. And I did very well with some of them, but I also bought places that were homes or that I expected to be homes. Or I went out and bought a piece of property because I wanted to get a residence permit. And then later someone said, well, hey, why don't you come and live near me? And so I said, well, okay, I'll, I'll spend part of my time living in that house I have over there because, hey, it's there, even though it isn't in the location that I want. And, even though it's not quite decorated the way that I want, and I kind of suffered. And so from the outside, you say, wow, this nomad capitalist lifestyle, how amazing that is. He can go anywhere he wants. He's a jet setter. And yet there were times when I was saying, well, okay, that's just good enough. I'll settle for this. Sometimes even because a friend or girlfriend or whomever else would say, well, come on, let's, let's go over here. And I said, well, I don't really want that, but I wouldn't stand up for myself. And I wouldn't say, well, no. And on the other hand, I wouldn't go out and spend the million dollars, the proverbial million dollars, to get what it is that I really wanted because it wasn't comfortable for me. And what I've done over the years 
is I've had to work very hard and be very self-aware to build up the comfort to say, no, I'm only gonna get this thing, whether it's a house, whether it's a place that I spend time, whatever it is, I'm only gonna do things that I want. I'm going to go where I'm treated best, not better, not relatively well, but where am I treated best? And it's been a process of adaptation and it's sometimes hard to let go of things where you say, you know what, I wanna spend four months every summer in Montenegro. And then you go and spend four months in the summer in Montenegro and say, hey, I, I love it here, love the house, love the view, love the place, but you know, uh, that's four months is just too much. You've gotta be willing, if you're gonna be successful as a nomad capitalist, to be able to let go of things that no longer serve you because the nomad part of nomad capitalist isn't that you're traveling around all the time because you can be a nomad capitalist just being in one place. The nomad part is being nomadic enough in your mind and in your soul to say, this isn't working for me anymore, or it's not working for me as much anymore, and, and be able to let go and be able to do something else that serves you, to be able to go where you're treated best. And as human beings, I think that it's natural for us to, to do too many things that we don't want to do. I've had conversations about business with people where I say, hey, you know, do you think I should do this or that? And they say, well, do you want to do this or that? And is common sense and as basic as it seems, you know, you've, you've sometimes got to ask yourself, do I really want this or that? And maybe I don't. No, I don't want that. And, and so then you don't do it. Having so many options is a beautiful thing, but it also requires a great deal of self-awareness. It requires a great deal of focus to say, I'm not gonna let myself slide into that thing that's a seven out of 10. I'm gonna go where I'm treated best. And if Mexico City is better for me than you know, spending four months in Montenegro, then by all means, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend one month in Montenegro. I'm gonna spend the rest of the time in Mexico City because that's what I want. And I'm gonna be able to let go of the attachment. I'm gonna be able to say, you know what? That thing that I thought could be permanent, turned out it wasn't permanent and I can change, I can pivot, I can adjust. And now I ask myself, why did I buy homes that I didn't love and then had to sell? Why didn't I believe in myself enough to invest in myself and my future? Why didn't I have the confidence to do that at times? And I think it's, it's scary to, sometimes to go overseas. I remember doing my first ever property deal for $22,000 and had a great return on the deal. But the biggest success of me of doing that deal was that it set me up to do the next deal that was 42,000 and then the next deal, and the next deal, and the next deal. One of the things that I think is challenging for a lot of people is what I call the curse of imagination. I think this affects a lot of people who look at what we do and they say, I wanna live that lifestyle. And I remember growing up, I'd read magazines, you know, read GQ, and you'd see the ad for the Burberry trench coat with the guy wearing the trench coat, walking down the streets of London, the beautiful woman on his arm, he's carrying an umbrella. What a dapper, sophisticated gentleman. I said, wow, you know, that really speaks to me. How do I, how do I live that life? And I think so many of us have been affected by advertising where the imagery is there, but yet the imagery never satisfies. A lot of people look at that imagery and they say, you know, look at, look at this global citizen lifestyle. How amazing would that be? But they don't see the less glamorous part where they realize it takes a lot of focus to make sure that you are giving yourself what you really need and what you really want because you have so many options and so many distractions. And I remember one time talking to a friend of mine not so long ago and I was telling him this story about the guy in the trench coat and he said, you know what, Andrew? He said, you've been successful in business. You've traveled all around the world. You are the guy in the trench coat, but you don't accept it and you don't know it because the imagery never satisfies and I realized if all you do is chase imagery, you're never gonna win. What you have to do is be in touch with yourself and say, what is it that I really want? You've gotta ask yourself mentally the questions, what do I wanna do? Where do I wanna live? How do I want my life structured? And then when you go and live in those places, you have to be honest with yourself and say, this feels great, that's me in Mexico City, or this doesn't feel so great, that's me in Bangkok, for example. And if you don't feel great in Bangkok, then don't say, well, oh, I can get this, this great deal on a property that has a high yield and I can get a permanent residence permit and that's fun. And, and so let me just do that. Let me do the thing that I don't like as much because it has some other benefit. I always encourage people, hey, let's, you know, let's get a citizenship that is a place you wanna live and maybe there's a property and you know, let's combine as many things as possible, but don't do stuff you don't want. I had to learn that the hard way. And to me, the greatest thing about being a nomad capitalist is that you have the freedom and the resources and the control to invest in yourself. 
for me, it was, no, I don't want to stay in a hotel. No, I don't want to stay, stay in an Airbnb. I want to be in control of my life. I want to have homes that I decorate. I want the art where I want. I want the things in the kitchen that I want. I want the, the iPhone charger plugged in and ready to go when I come in from my flight. I want to have control, and I have the ability to do that. But the hardest thing for me was fighting my own worst enemy, which was myself, and saying, I have to be willing to step into making that investment because I know that that investment makes me more productive, makes me happier, gives me all the benefits that we talk about here because it's great to have a lot of money, it's great to save money, it's great to have freedom, but ultimately we're all chasing happiness. We're all chasing a sense of peace and calm in our lives that we know that we're living the best life we can. For me, uh, getting married and focusing on the long term has given me an almost Chinese like 100 year vision where I've started to ask myself not you know what is this property going to return in a yield in the next one year or not you know which property has the cheapest price per square meter or oh you know could I pay zero percent here but but you know that's better than two percent over here what I've started to ask myself is where do I want to be in 20 50 years what do I want my legacy to be? What do I want the impact of what I'm doing on future generations to be? And that has, that can be seen in everything from the property portfolio you create, the passport portfolio you create. I'm now becoming a builder. I want to be a builder, not just in business, where I'm building a better and better business that reaches more and more people, but I want the network of homes, the places where I love, where I feel comfortable, where I live my best life. I want. The passports, not just that help me get diversification, because that's important, but the passports that are places that I might want to go, that give me the access to live that life, not just now, but for the next 50 years. To me, shifting out of the mode of what's happening right now and focusing on the future guides me to how to achieve the best life, focuses on the things that really matter, happiness, peace, calm, tranquility and that's been very powerful for me there is an incredible self-awareness that's needed to win at a game with so many options around you because so many options can become a trap and the beauty of nomad capitalist i think is that you have more control to choose the options that truly serve you if you're willing to be totally honest with yourself about what it is that you want not what anyone else wants, not what your family wants for you, not what you think that you might want or what you used to want or what someone's telling you to want from an advertisement, but what do you deep down in your soul want? And that's how you can truly go where you're treated best.